Hello, everybody. My name is Josh Cook, and today I'm speaking on behalf of ADSRSounds.com on a production technique known as vocal glitching. To be clear, the technique of glitching doesn't have to specifically be used on vocals. You could glitch a synthesizer line, a bass part, uh, an effect, some drums, whatever it is you want to glitch, you can apply some of these techniques too. Um, if you guys haven't already subscribed to ADSR Sound's YouTube channel, please go to youtube.com forward slash ADSR Tuts, spelt T-U-T-S. There you'll find a bunch of videos on sound design, music theory, and a whole lot more. So getting into the various approaches for how to glitch a sound. First, you could go out, you could buy some software. Uh, there's a piece of software known as Effectrix, where basically you pull in an audio file and they have all these different algorithms uh, for these different patterns for you to randomize it or to set glitches to a specific time value. Uh, it's really great if you want to randomize a pattern if you're stuck, like you don't know how to start something, throw it into that software and just start applying some of their uh, patterns and stuff. Um, otherwise, uh, I would say if you want to do something that th that's a little bit more melodic specific, uh, you might want to try one of the other uh, approaches that I'll be talking about today. So again, that software is called Effectrix, uh, and there's lots of other glitching software out there. That's just one example. So the second way I'll be talking about is uh, in Ableton. I'm using Ableton 8, just to be clear. In Ableton, you can right-click an audio file and select Slice to New MIDI Track. So I'm going to do that with this little uh, audio chunk here. To be clear, you don't want too large of a uh, audio file. Uh, you want to trim it down because otherwise it's not actually going to be able to slice the whole thing. You have to give it, it sort of like you overload the system. So make sure it's a nice small little uh, sample with lots of different sounds. Not just like one held vowel kind of thing. So we're slicing and there's different ways you can slice it. You can slice it to any warp markers that are within the audio file. You can slice it to transient or then a specific time value, bar, half note, quarter note, etc. We're gonna slice it to transients, which is basically the most impactful points of the wave where there's a clear attack that uh, Ableton is able to slice at that point. So I created a new track here. You can see the MIDI information. And if on my MIDI keyboard, I play a chromatic scale, starting down at C, a bunch of semitones, we get... I'm not too sick, it's I'm too weak to do. So if you were to go from there and sort of finger drum on the keyboard, you could get uh, some sort of cool glitching pattern. So... So what's um, still limiting about this technique, though, is that it's much more complicated to uh, assign different pitches to all these sounds, uh, as opposed to the third technique that I'll be showing you, where uh, it's all very specific as to what uh, note each uh, chunk will be. So uh, that's the second technique. And the third is literally just chopping a wave file, and then all the little chops that you've made, you assign a new pitch to. Unless you like the first pitch, you can keep it. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to this wave file here and pick out some beefier sections. Uh, in other words, I'm looking for parts of the wave that are a little bit more sort of thick. That's a good chunk there and there. Maybe take two more. So anything that isn't those chunks, you're going to delete those. And then what I'll do is I'll line these all up beside each other and just have a listen to what each of these sounds actually is. Now, this is a sort of more randomized way of going about it. You could listen to the whole thing and figure out based on vowels or certain sounds what it is that you want to actually be uh, using, what chunks you want to use. So then you can go and extract those. I'm just picking it based on what I feel is a healthy looking chunk of a wave file. So we have this right now. Wow, not a very clear image. Let's, uh, let's do this, let's slow it down the whole session to 110 beats per minute. And I'm just gonna take the first chunk and loop it a couple times. We're gonna listen to that. All right. Now, for those of you who are inclined with music theory, you want to try to figure out where, first of all, what key you're in, what key is the piece in, and then this first little chunk, what note is that in relation to the scale or, or the key of the piece? So it sounds like it's based on the root right now, or the do, first note, whatever you want to call it. And uh, so for right now, I'm just going to keep this going for a little bit. And we're going to reassign different pitches. It's kind of nice that it's starting us down on the do, so to speak, because then we can sort of use scale knowledge from there to reassign different pitches. So first two, we'll keep the same. The second one, we're going to pull up to the second note of the scale. 
And then the next one, the third note of, this is a minor scale that we're thinking of. So up two semitones on this one was up uh, to the next note of the scale. Up three semitones, it brings us up to the third note of the scale. I'm going to jump up to the fifth note for two, let's say. And then I'm going to go to the minor seventh for two as well. So we might have an interesting melody sort of getting created here. Let's check it out. So something's starting to develop, but it's still kind of boring. So what I'm going to do is pull in a part of one of these other ones. And again, I might want to figure out what pitch that is. So I'm going to play it a few times over here. That sounds like the second note of our scale, like Ray, so to speak. I'm just going to pull it in between a couple random spots here. Maybe make it a little bit shorter. There's really no rules to this. You're kind of just doing whatever feels right. And over here. All right, let's listen to it now. It's coming along. We'll add a couple extra little spots in here. I'm going to get rid of this stuff. And you know what? I'm going to go back and just replace some of these with the random chunks here and see how it sounds. Cool. It's starting to get somewhere. Um, I want to be mindful of how long uh, this pattern lasts. I should probably consider that um, this here would be my loop point. So do I want to have this space beforehand? I don't know. Maybe not. We'll pull this over and maybe do something a bit different with the rhythm. And then you would take this whole thing again and you would duplicate it and you could alter certain little sections if you wanted to. To be clear, another thing you can do is with longer sections, um, like this little chunk over here, you can turn on and off the speaker or uh, in another program you can automate the mute button. Same sort of idea. So I'm going to do that for, actually set to 6, we'll keep it set to 30 second. So I'm going to turn that off twice to get a little faster glitch there. Let's check it out. And then maybe there as well. All right, it's sounding pretty good. There's a couple little spots in there. I'm not really too happy with the note, but that's just one example. Again, I'll go back to the other one that I created uh, off the start. It sounds something like this. Hold on, two things. Let's set our session back to 180 and make sure that this doesn't turn itself back on. Uh, let's try that out. And then from there, the uh, the new one again. Let's check that out. So you can see there's lots of different possibilities for uh, how you can arrange all these pitches. The, the most difficult part of this, I would say, is um, that part where you're listening to wave files and trying to figure out where you are within your scale. Um, just comes from practice of music theory, or you can also sort of use some sort of uh, device or software to determine what pitch it is uh, to help speed things along. So uh, one last thing, you can also use this technique uh, as a common sort of transition into a drop. So during the build of a, a dance track, what a lot of guys will do is they'll take a, a word or a part of a word, and I'm just going to take whatever this is, and they'll duplicate it a bunch, and each time, they'll set it up one extra semitone. So it was already set to 7 originally. We'll set it to 8, then to 9, 10. I'm actually going to double up the time value for each of these. So you can hear the effect a little bit better. So oh. let's check it out. It's going to sound something like this. So that sort of idea. I'm reminded of uh, Zed and Haley Williams' uh, Stay the Night. Uh, they do that as uh, part of the, one of the buildups. Um, yeah, so you can use this technique in a lot of different ways. So thanks for watching. And one more time, don't forget to subscribe to uh, youtube.com forward slash ADSR Tuts.